All right, folks, welcome. This will be <clears throat> our lesson on using the lip syncing, the automatic lip sync detection tools in TuneBoom. So we are going to be, instead of using my notes today, be looking at um, this um, Learn module on lip sync animation in TuneBoom on the TuneBoom Learn website. So I'm gonna just quickly run through some of these and then we'll get into doing the assignment. We're not gonna be using their materials, we're gonna use the materials I provided to you on the modules page. So let's review a little bit of our discussion about mouth shapes from when we were doing this in Maya. So here you can see are the different uh, mouth shapes, general mouth shapes that you might use for um, some automatic lip sync deten detection. Now I wanna point out, um, which we'll talk about in a second, but uh, those the letters that are underneath those mouth shapes do not correspond to the letter of the, the like sound they're saying. That is not, like the letter F does not have that mouth shape. Those are just labels for those mouth shapes, labeled A through G and then an X shape for neutral closed mouth. So <clears throat> breaking down our, our dialogue, um, just thinking about what is the timing of the, our dialogue. So I've provided you audio for this assignment, but these are the things that you might consider in general. What's the mood? What's the body language? How is the body gonna describe what we're doing? And what is the character doing and why? So a lot of things go into these considerations about um, using dialogue. Now, for us, we're going to just keep it pretty, play it straight. I have a clip for you of this gentleman here. That's it. So that's what we're going to work on today. So let's click back to lip sync animation. So phrasing and lip syncing. So discussing about how lip syncing works. So lip syncs are not necessarily based upon the, the written language, let's say, how in our case our English language might be written down. Um, it's more about the sound you're making and the syllable that you're pronouncing. So we might smudge a word together as they're describing here. Um, I'm reminded of a Jeff Foxworthy uh, joke uh, called the Redneck Dictionary, where he would often joke about this, where it's like one of the words that he uses is a witchy did you? And, he's, and it's like, uh, you didn't bring your uh, toe hitch, witchy did you? And that's you know, a big smudge of words together. So it's like, keep in mind that when you're doing lip syncing, you're, you're lip syncing to the audio as it's been pronounced. So... Um, if you're trying to do the auto lip syncing, these smudged words, they might lead to some uh, sort of clumsiness on behalf of the algorithm. And so you might need to be careful that you make sure you're getting what you need out of your mouth shapes. They're basically describing here, talking about um, designing the mouth shapes to accurately reflect what it is that you're doing. It's obviously what we were just talking about a second ago with feeling the, the, what's the character doing, what are the, what's the action going on, what is their um, energy level and motivation, et cetera, et cetera. So for ours, he's just hyped about saying Pokeball Go. Pretty straightforward. So like I was saying, the letters used to represent these shapes do not correspond to the actual sound they're making. So an A shape, an A mouth shape is not the A sound your mouth would be making. An A shape, I wanna say actually, is, oh yeah, so an A shape corresponds to a mm, like those shapes, because your mouth makes those sounds with your mouth closed. An actual ah, uh, ah uh, is a D sound, a D shape, so you can see mouth open wide here, so. So that is um, what we are going to need to produce in order to actually allow Toon Boom to do our lip syncing. So we need to produce a set of mouth shapes, or as they call it, a mouth chart, to be used 
with our audio for this auto lip sync detection. So let's actually hop into Toon Boom now. So we're gonna do Ash lip sync demo. We're gonna create a scene. <clears throat> okay. So what I have given you on the modules page is, um, hold on, I gotta wait for my Zoom stuff to go away. So we go to modules. So down here at the bottom, you'll see we have an ash no mouth png and pokeball go audio file. Okay, so you'll need both of those. So first of all, I'm just gonna, just like we did with the background of the Pac-Man, I'm gonna import my image, grab my no mouth ash PNG, open. I don't need to vectorize this, it's fine as it is. I'm just gonna hit okay. So we wanna bring that in. Okay, and so you'll notice that he doesn't fill the whole frame and we're gonna deal with that in a second. Okay, so now we have a drawing layer here that's empty. Well, I'm just gonna rename that drawing layer that I have here and this will be for my mouth. Okay, so I have my image imported and I have a drawing layer that will be used for my mouth shapes. So for my image layer, you can see that it is not by default filling the entire frame of my camera. So before we start animating, let's tell the golden guy, take five, okay, union coffee break. So we're gonna turn animate off. We're gonna grab, whoops, hold on. Grab the scale tool. And so again, I'm turning animate off before I do this because I want to scale this at all points in time, okay? And, um, you know, it's from the uh, it's from the bygone era of standard definition. So I'm gonna hold shift and make this bigger and we're gonna cut off a little bit of the top and the bottom and call it good. Okay, so now my ash for starters will fill the whole screen at the start. Okay, great. So now, so I got this here. I got my mouth shapes. Um, just because I don't want to forget, now that I'm done doing my pre-animation stuff, I can turn my animate stuff back on. Okay. So golden guy is back. We're getting ready to move into the animating. Now before I start animating this stuff, let's go make my mouth shapes. So zoom in here. Take my brush tool, show all my tool properties. All right, so I'm on frame one, and this is my A shape. So simple closed mouth shape. All right, I think that's a little too big. So we got that, and then, ah, I still have this on. I should have closed Toon Boom all the way down. So um, good thing I caught that though. So now I'm on frame two. I can't see my A shape though. That's kind of a problem. I wanna make sure all of my mouths are staying in like the same area so that we don't see the mouth sort of floating around in different, air, in the general area, but floating, right? So I'm gonna turn on our good friend, the onion skin. Okay, and so now I can see my A shape, and now I can go ahead and, oops. And so this will be, oops. Oops. And so for B shape, it's just mildly open. You can see B, C, and D are very much in the same vein. It's just different levels of the mouth being open. 
How loony can the mouths be? Um, you need for this one. Uh, you need to do it relatively accurately. This is this is this is a show me you know what you're doing before you get to doing the crazy stuff. This is in that vein. Um, okay, so we're here. We got a B shape, and again, I'm using my onion skin so I can see my B shape there. We'll do. Oops. A little above all right oh whoops I forgot to Close this mouth shape. All right, so that's a C shape. And then we're going to go for, uh, let me take a look at this. Now I will point out to you that these mouth shapes are a little bit more of the side view than the three quarters view that we're working on. These are still decently three quarters, but these are more towards the side view than they are pure three quarters. Okay, so I just need to make sure I'm getting more. So you can see here the top lip doesn't move too much between these, but the bottom lip has much more of this open curvature here, right? So. All right. All right, hold on, let me, let me finish up my shapes before I go back to color. All right, so that's my D shape. So now we're on the E shape. E is more of this O. It's a soft O. O. O and O. So E is O, F is O, so. This one it's about as wide open as the D shape, but much narrower in the shape of the mouth. See, with this being way long back, you know that's when your mouth's wide open, whereas if you have this closer to the front, then you know that it's, uh, I'm gonna have to decline that right now. And uh, so, let me go back to this, so we'll make a... Do a little bit like that. And then we'll go big O shape here. This is my F shape. And then we got a G shape, chomp it on lip. All right, there's me biting on my lip. And then finally an X shape, which is basically the same as the A shape. It's the closed mouth, except X denotes just the mouth being closed, not making sound. So then we'll go, whoops, like 
like this. There are my mouth shapes. All right, so now I'm gonna go through <clears throat> here and I'm gonna make, this will be mouth BG. Oops, hue, so I'll put it on here. And so I'm going to go ahead and press K to show my strokes. Whoops. Sure. Okay. Cool. So I've been using my brush, so everything is mushed together. So we got red back here, red back here, red back here. And then I'm just going to grab white for my teeth. Boom. And we'll go here. White for the teeth. Mouth background red. Mouth background red, teeth are white. Teeth are white. Mouth background, mouth background. Teeth. All right, turn my K Click back in here, turn K off. All right, so I got my mouth shapes made. I got Ash in here. Next thing we need to do, let's get that audio in here. So file, import, sound. Pokeball Go, open that up. Boom, boom, boom. Now, it will look like the audio doesn't go past frame 60. It's actually 180 frames, so you can just go ahead and drag it out, or 170 rather, I think. So yeah, there you go, 170. Okay, so let's go and start by making sure that we extend Ash's exposure all the way to frame 170. And so now we're ready to do our lip sync. So let's listen to our audio clip real quick. And again, I have these two, these audio buttons here for audio. So this is scrub sound. So this means that as I drag in the timeline, it'll show me, it'll play the sound on that frame as I scrub through. This is playing with audio. So typically I have both of these on. Now, one thing to notice is that our audio is all the way over here. But it is going to try and lip sync this stuff too which you will notice in a second. So first I'm gonna increase my parameters to 200. I think that doubles the audio. It certainly makes it easier to see the, the waveform on the timeline. Okay, so again, you have your eight mouth shapes, you have Ash in here, your audio. So here's where we need to talk about some specifics of um, the, um, Tune Boom setup. So if I click on this library tab here, you'll notice that on my mouse, if I hover over each of these, it's gonna tell me which drawing each of these is corresponding to. Now, because I've done nothing else in this, and these are the only things that I drew on here, each of these is in order one through eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see here in my library, it's going to tell me which drawing I'm selected on at a time. So um, we will be messing with that in a second when we need to correct our mouth shapes. But for right now, we just need to know these are drawings one through eight. If we did this right, you can check the number of the drawing by hovering over them in the timeline. Okay, let's select our audio. So we're lip syncing to this audio layer. So animation menu, lip sync, and you should see this auto lip sync detection become active. I will auto lip sync detect the audio file. 
And so we'll figure out which mouth shape it thinks should be present at each of these um, on each frame. Okay. So again, select it on the audio layer, animation, lip sync, map lip sync. So now that the auto mapping has been processed, we can now link these. So the mouths layer should be your destination layer. And if you did everything right, it should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hit okay. And so there you can see the audio has been processed all the way through. So let's see what it's gonna give me by default though. So the audio part was okay, but it does, like I said, also process the music part. So again, I'm looking here in my library tab and I'm gonna click on this and sort of scrub along here. So he opens his mouth about right here. And right here, So if this is supposed to be the end of where he has his mouth closed, and you can see it has it on the, the A pose, like the mouth is actually closed, but that's a mmm sound. So everything from here where I'm at at 112 to frame one on Ash, so I'm gonna click here to the end of this. I have all of these frame highlighted, and I'm gonna slide these all to mouth eight. And you'll see that my timeline updates, and now, All right, so that we fix that part. So now the next step, are we getting the right audio lip sync in here? So I would argue that it's okay, but we need to fix the, the long ah sound and the long o oh sound. Poke a ball, go. So I'm going to take from here, from here to this single frame here on 130, I'm going to move this to my fourth mouth shape, my D shape. And then through, so let's watch that back, right? So we hold the long A here. So I would say from here to here, instead of having just the slightly open mouth shape, this is a, a long, oh, uh, so I'm gonna put my E, my E shape here. And maybe even at the end here, I'll go into my, All right, so we got the audio in there, lip synced. Um, you'll also notice it doesn't uh, extend the exposure, I guess, of this all the way to the end. So I guess we'll just clip this to 160 here. Okay, there we go. Now we're missing some of the artistry. So let's take a look here. So we're starting with the wide view. We've already got, it's a still image, so we don't have him spinning his hat around, but we'll stick with basically through a second and a half, he's holding on the wide shot, right? So let's go ahead and start messing with our camera. How would we do that? Well, we already have the answers ahead of us. Plus sign. Well, there's more than a color card in here. There's also a camera. So I'm gonna add a camera. This camera just controls the camera that's already in there. You might even notice that my, you can't really see it, but the line changes colors. 
Okay, great. Well, how do we control layers in Toon Boom? With pegs, as we have with our other stuff so far. Okay, great. This camera's in a peg. What do I do now? Well, animate it using the tools you know. So we're gonna start with this pose here. We wanna keep this locked in. So I'm just gonna hit F6, lock a keyframe there. And like I said, a second and a half, so about 36 here would be 24 plus 12. So we'll hold on this pose for 36 frames. Because he, he that, that sound you're hearing is him swiping his hat, hat back. Then we zoom from the wide shot into this like close-up shot on both eyes. And so we'll zoom into that over 12 frames. And so here I am on frame 48. I'm gonna start by moving this off to the side a little bit and up a little bit. You might be saying, uh, Mr. Meyer, yo, yo your, your camera frame here, chief. Well, I'm gonna go into my top view of my peg and I'm gonna move this peg in three dimensions on my two dimensional object. And I'll pull it closer to this image Uh, it's a little too close, actually. So this is more of a close-up on our face here. So now we're going from... So I'm going to hold this. How long do we hold this here? We hold it for like a, a, a split second, right? So then we'll only hold it for half a second then. So that's six frames. So we'll go to about here. We'll F6 that right there. And now we're gonna move forward after half a second, let's say. So 12 frames from there. Now we wanna be zoomed in on this eye. So it doesn't draw back until at the end of that noise, I'm pretty sure. Yep, right before he says Pokeball is when it starts to draw back. And so we will hold this till here. So we'll F6 there. And then essentially what I'm gonna do is just grab my, my keyframe for frame one. We'll throw that. Um, right here on frame six. And what do you got? And so if you really want to get, get technical, is a simple limp sync. So the main nuts and bolts of this, folks, you'll bring in your ash, you'll draw the eight mouth shapes in order on one drawing layer, then you'll bring in your audio file. The first step is to then auto lip sync detect the audio file. And then once that is completed, then you go back into this menu and map the lip sync to that audio file. Again, it should be mapping it one through eight to A through X. And then all you have to do is go back in, do what I did. So I corrected the, the long A and poke a ball and the long O and go to use the correct mouth shapes. 
And then um, the scene planning stuff you should try and do. But the next assignment is scene planning. So um, if you find it too difficult, then you can always come back and do it um, afterwards. All right. Thank you folks for watching the demo video on putting together the Ash lip sync.